Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Sunday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Certainly appreciate you folks tuning in as we try to figure out what's going to happen weather-wise for today. Uh, there's a lot of storylines out there. The biggest storyline is um, Hurricane Hillary, which by the time some of you folks watch this, it will be downgraded to Tropical Storm Hillary as she has been basically rapidly weakening over the last 24 hours. So the core of Hillary will uh, move inland into the southwest uh, today. But we're already having impacts. We've already had a lot of impacts this weekend. We're seeing it right now. A lot of heavy rain has moved in. But like I said, the core of Hillary, especially the eastern side, basically the area that's east of the actual center of low pressure, pressure of Hillary, will move into areas of like Southern California um, later today, which that core means um, it'll bring the strongest winds and then it will even bring a tornado threat for a few hour period across Southern California. Extremely rare, but we literally have a threat of tornadoes in the deserts of Southern California. Okay, so we need to talk about that. We need to break that down. We'll talk about the entire low of 48 too. And then we'll give you an update on what's going on out there in the Atlantic. But we'll get more detailed on the Atlantic tonight. Um, so we're gonna go kind of just over the information in the Atlantic about what is threatening. We're not going to talk about the system does, systems that just do not look like they're going to threaten land as of now. We're going to focus on the ones that could threaten lands over the next seven days. And when I say threaten, I don't mean a major hurricane, guys. I just mean in general impact. So I want to quickly apologize. Um, I've not been able to answer comments over the last two videos. It's been a very active uh, last two days for me. Um, and uh, Things did not go this according to plan yesterday with how I kind of... Uh, laid out my day. I had issues with my push mower that delayed me two or three hours and uh, just kind of caused a domino effect throughout the rest of the day. I had an, uh, I had pretty much uh, planned out a video for yesterday evening, but just never had time. I just kind of ran out of gas. Um, so uh, we'll get you guys answer all the questions, answer all the comments acknowledged today. Um, got like a nine to 10 hours of sleep last night. So if I'm sounding kind of foggy, or just not very energetic. I do apologize, uh, but we're going to muscle our way through it because it's very active and uh, we need to get you guys some clear, good information. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. You guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over as always, please put it on the comments below. In the comments below, it gives me an opportunity to pray over it and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. Let's take a look at Water Vapor Loop. And it will show us the Eastern Pacific, the Atlantic, and the lower 48, even Mexico, Central America. So you see this right here. This is Hillary, this kind of big blob of white that's moving northward. This is Hillary moving in, upper level low right here that's pulling Hillary in. And it's working in sequence with a ridge of high pressure that's built over the central U.S. And this is taking an avenue, basically sandwiched, the moisture is sandwiched in between both of these atm atmospheric flows out here. And you are getting basically just a push of moisture into Southern California, Nevada, uh, areas of Arizona, Utah. And this is going to make it all the way up into Idaho. And then eventually maybe even into um, southwestern portions of Canada. At the same time, you got many areas to watch out here in the Atlantic. One's a pretty robust tropical wave that has entered the eastern Caribbean. You actually got a tropical depression a little bit further east. And then we have a tropical wave right here, which I think will become a lot more convectively active over the next 24 hours as it heads on across the Gulf of Mexico and could bring some beneficial rain to South Texas. So this is what's going on right now. Not a whole lot going outside of Hillary, not a whole lot going on outside of Hillary for the rest of the 48 today. So when we do get to that section of the video, we're going to skim through it pretty quick, but we're going to spend a lot of time on the Southwest, more time than we ever have spent on the southwest for sure so we look at the radar <clears throat> really the only thing going on is in the southwest which is a lot a lot of rain is surging in to uh southern california this is right on top of las vegas and southern sections of nevada you got a shield of rain even into northern nevada you got rain all the way up into areas of um idaho and we even got rain up here in montana that we're waking up to and as this continues to chug along this ridge of high pressure that's centered back over here. But this is basically the northern shield of rain that's getting yanked northward right here. The actual center of um, Hillary is down here, okay? As she continues to chug northward, this is where the center, center of Hillary is. And uh, this is where the core of probably the worst weather will be. Yes, you're probably gonna start to get some flash flood warnings 
um, in Southern California probably any minute now, honestly, but over the next several hours. But the really heavy rain, the strong winds, and even a tornado threat on the eastern side of, uh, of Hillary is definitely going to emerge over Southern California um, over the next several hours until the early afternoon hours. Well, there will be, a, in general, a brief period where there will have the potential to be some tornadic activity in the desert of Southern California, the deserts. So uh, pretty wild. But this is it. This is tropical, rich tropical moisture from the Pacific. Moving in. Um, we take a look at the Storm Prediction Center and what's going on. Nothing really, but your eyes immediately go to this. You see this little itty bitty slight risk. It's a level two out of five. You got a marginal risk around it that's much larger. This is the severe weather that we typically see on the northeastern or eastern quadrants of these tropical systems. And it's no different just because it's in the eastern Pacific and the desert southwest. Okay, we're seeing it again. The tornado threat, severe weather threat has done nothing but increase in this region. And here it goes. We got a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles of any given location in Southern California. Uh, well, this is well, um, well east of San Diego and Los Angeles, so this does not include the big cities of San Diego and Los Angeles, but it does include a large little portion, a large little portion, <laughs> that makes sense, of Southern California. All right, the wind threat, just a 5% risk and hell threat below 5% risk, but of course you cannot rule it out. But there is a legit tornado risk, a rare 5% tornado risk in Southern California today. Rainfall, a high risk, a very large high risk in some of uh, in areas of the country that literally, I think Death Valley, I think they their average rainfall a year is 2.3 inches. I think you guys are already seeing rain obviously right now, but you, I think you're forecast to see like four to six inches of rain uh, between the beginning and the end of this event. But you got the high risk right here. That's at least a 70% risk of flashlight guidance being exceeded in the pink area you see, or you want to call that purple, it's purple. But I, I say that's more so pink for sure. Um, moderate risk in the red, that is at least a 40% chance of the same criteria. And then you got the slight risk, which extends all the way up into Idaho. That is at least a 15% risk of flashlight guidance being met. So this is the moisture um, from Hillary getting pulled northward. And um, it's a lot of it watches and warnings and of course that we're going to get more detail on that that's not the only information i'm going to give on that but you see this kind of mustard color right here that's high wind warnings okay the core the e i keep saying the core but the core which is the eastern side of the actual center of low pressure of hillary will get pulled into this region where you'll have basically a few hour period of anywhere from 30 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts that's going to surge up into this region right here and eventually reaching all the way into idaho this is going to affect western sections of Utah, too. Obviously, Southern Cal, uh, the extreme western counties of uh, Arizona, uh, Nevada. And, yeah, I mean, the winds are really going to pick up over the next 12 to 24 hours from south to north into these regions. So you got flood watches. They're also in effect for the same areas that you do have these high wind warnings. Okay, so, um, you know. High winds, saturated soil, they, they do not go good together. You got trees that are going to fall. You got mud slides, rock slides. And uh, yeah, it's not a good situation. That red color, that is tropical storm warnings, which has been in effect for, you know, a day or so now. And uh, tropical storm conditions will get going into this region. Uh, you already got the rain from it, but the winds will definitely start to pick up over the next several hours. Um, and then we got the heat. We got this heat dome centered over the central portion of the country. This is now extending into portions of the Midwest, even starting to ooze into areas of Indiana, Western Kentucky, and even some heat, advisory into, heat advisories into Western areas of Tennessee. Excessive heat warnings in this pink color, pink is purple, and then the burgundy color, that is excessive heat watches, where you could get upgraded from maybe heat advisories to excessive heat warnings. Uh, but very hot. I, I saw a reading, I believe, in Kansas yesterday where it was um, around a, the air temperature was like 115 degrees. It's just in the heat index is like 125. Um, man, that's brutal, guys. I, I, I saw I, I apologize on behalf of the weather. That is just we need to get rid of this this mess. This is ridiculous. Um, hopefully we will soon. Um, update. Let's give you an update on Hillary. This is just going to be a, a massive update on the southwest here. So timestamps will be a lot different in this video compared to other morning videos. So definitely take advantage of them if you just want to hear about your area. Um, so um, I will have them all set up about five to 10 minutes after I drop this video. But we're going to give you an update on the southwest and Hillary. 
with this. So right now, as of right now, the 2 a.m. update, and let's see if there's been another update. We can try to see. Oh, there has. So um, this is, I think it dropped five miles per hour, still an 80 mile per hour hurricane, which is considered a category one hurricane. And um, it is basically thrashing the coastline of Baja California right now, the Baja Peninsula. You see these hurricane warnings up in the red. So the core hasn't technically made a landfall yet. It probably will a little bit further up the coastline of the Baja Peninsula, but some of the worst impacts are hitting them right now. Now I imagine this isn't <clears throat> as far as the flooding, um, the wind threat, the winds are probably not going to be catastrophic by any means with this. This is rapidly weakened. We knew this was going to happen and sure enough it is. Um, but it's the flooding kind of going up against these mountains and uh, yeah, it's never good. It's never good. So it's a hurricane still, but we expect this to uh, weaken into a tropical storm probably in the next update or two. Uh, we still got tropical storm warnings up up into the southern coastline, southwest coastline of California. This will weaken into a storm probably on the next update or two, be a depression by the time we get into tonight into California. But this makes a lot of ground between now and 11 p.m. tonight, okay? I mean, this thing's already about to enter Nevada by the time we get into tonight. That's pretty wild. And it's just picking up a lot of speed as it really transitions, I would say. I mean, it's, I don't think it's going to make the full transition from tropical to non-tropical, but um, it, it, will be, it will be in the process of doing so as it really merges with an upper level low, gets a lot of dry air, and it and already has. In fact, we look at it right now, a lot of dry air from this upper level low affecting and basically just making and the, the western side of the storm non-existent. Okay, this is the core right into here of Hillary. This is where all the worst weather is right here, just east of the core right here, basically thrashing of the Baja Peninsula. Then you got a huge surge of rain way away from the core. This is very common for lopsided tropical systems, which she totally is. She began the process of becoming lopsided yesterday, and uh, she has not looked back. And we expected this. This is not something we did not expect by any means. So let's take a look at the HRRR model, how this can unfold today. So uh, HRRR model is doing a pretty decent job of indicating kind of what's going on right now. Now this is going to be in Eastern time. So back this up, what, three hours? <laughs> so technically 5 a.m. Uh, so we keep this in motion here, right? I think the rain will just continue in most of Southern Cal today. There could be a little lull, a little break and extreme eastern areas of Southern California, kind of where California meets Arizona. But the shield of rain will continue just to uh, you know, pump up in here into Nevada. So rain will just continue. Mo um, basically, a surge of moisture will continue to pump up into Nevada basically the entire day. But as we make our way into around lunchtime, the shield of rain could really start to ooze its way a little bit further west into Central California. Uh, and the highest elevations, this could be snow. If you look really, really hard, you see this blue right here? That's snow way up in the higher elevation, like above 10,000 feet into the Sahara Nevada. But um, you see this little section that opens up right in here? You see these oranges and reds? That is where our, when our severe weather threat emerges. At the same time, it's raining cats and dogs still. So this is when your heavier rain comes, but it's not as consolidated, like it's not as congealed together. But these are when our little storms can get going. And we have these uh, hodographs that, su that support really just quick moving uh, low level hodographs, which means that it's probably not gonna really show up well on like the updraft of the Listy Swap. And uh, these will be, if we get some tornadoes in this area today, they'll be very quick, they'll move through very fast. What's gonna be wild is if there's any storm chasers in this area chasing in the desert and you get a tornado um, in the desert, that is gonna be some wild footage, right? Um, so the, luckily, not a whole lot of people live out in the desert. So it's not like this is affecting a massive population, but this is still going to affect a lot of people. At the same time, we got these little feeder bands that are, because of Hillary, kind of flying into Arizona. So really anybody in Arizona, especially the central and western half of Arizona, these storms could produce a tornado too, some severe weather. I'd watch all these out, but really watch uh, right here close to the center, which is right in here for these storms to produce a tornado. I mean, you gotta watch out into Las Vegas too, but really it's this area. These could produce a quick spin up. The core of Hillary's still right in here. It's raining very heavily in San Diego, even getting into Las Vegas, I'm sorry, in, into um, Los Angeles, lots of heavy rain. I would say 
around 4 to 5 p.m. This is when your tropical storm force conditions are really kicking in. This is where your power outages can occur in Los Angeles, San Diego. And this continues and just quickly races north. By the time we get into about midnight, um, most of the rain is uh, really just over the higher elevations of California, fully moving into areas of uh, Nevada, western Nevada, and starting to get all the way up into Washington State and Oregon and areas of Idaho, but you still are dealing with a little bit of leftover moisture. So this is going to move in and move out quick. When the It's not like the core of this storm, the worst part, is going to sit over the same area for a long time. It's not. It's going to move in and out. But it's going to do some damage first, flooding-wise. And this is already happening right now. Now, the heaviest rain has it fully moved in as of right now, but it's in the process of moving in. So a little bit closer look at this flash flooding risk. Um, nothing but different deserts into this region. Okay, not everybody is a full-fledged desert, but there is this this area um, of Southern California, especially when you work your way a little bit further east into this region outside LA, um, a lot of desert, but there's a lot of mountain ranges too. A lot of individual higher areas that have higher elevations. So it's, it's a microclimate. There's mountains in here. All this rain is getting pushed up against these mountains. This helps to squeeze every little bit of rain out. Therefore, you got this high risk a 70% risk, remember, of excessive rainfall being exceeded in this region. Basically, 70% risk of flash flooding happening. Okay, Las, Las Vegas, you're right up against that high risk, 40% risk of it. This is uh, this is good. This is kind of one of them situations where, you know, you get to about early to mid morning, uh, to this morning, say, and uh, you're thinking, man, this really isn't that bad. But things all of a sudden, like a light switch, get bad quick. This is kind of one of those setups. Okay. Basically, when that core moves in into Southern California, things could go downhill fast when you mix in these high winds and then you mix in this flooding and even the tornado threat. I mean, who knows? We could have a mini tornado outbreak in Southern California today. We could. When I say Southern California, I'm not talking about L.A., San Diego. OK, I'm talking about east of you guys. But this is rainfall um, today between now and the next 24 hours based off the HRRR model. Um, you know, certain areas could get up to 10 inches of rain up against these higher elevations. You see this area is in yellow. All right. That is where you have higher elevation. I mean, the lower elevation, you're still going to get a lot of rain, you know, two, three, four, five, six inches of rain as possible. Okay. But where this really, this, this plume of moisture pushes up against these higher mountain tops, these higher mountain ranges, these ridges, it squeezes out every bit of rain possible. A lot of rain. Okay. Some areas will get more rain than they typically see some areas like Death Valley could get more rain than they see in a one in one to two years um, in like a two day time frame. OK, which that two day time frame already started. But you get what I'm saying. A lot of rain into this area. Stick to your local people. Your local people know your microclimates better, your geographical features better. Stick to your local people, your local National Weather Service and News Network. They're going to take care of you with this one. OK, but this is the HRRR model. And then a little bit closer look up at the watches and warnings, tropical storm warnings up for um, uh, San Diego, L.A. Um, you will get full-fledged tropical storm conditions a little bit later today. High wind warnings up for this mustard color right here. And then this is kind of overlapped by the flash, uh, I'm sorry, by the flood watches in the green right in here. So it's going to go down here quick, hill quick. And then as this moves in, the core moves in. Like this is right now. Well, this isn't right now. This is a couple hours from now. You're thinking, um, you know, the, the winds aren't that bad, okay? It's just a little bit of a breeze out there. But as we move through here in time, guys, let's see if we can get this thing moving a little bit faster, okay? We start to get closer to lunchtime out here. Look at this core of strong winds. This is the blend of all models, okay? You got some uh, 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts beginning to move into southwest areas of Arizona and Southern California. And then this quickly takes over the region. So this is probably around... I would say four or five o'clock. Look at these winds moving into areas of Southern California. Okay, I would argue some of these stronger winds are a little bit further west, but I mean you got you got consistent 20, 30, 40 mile per hour winds blowing through LA, San Diego, but you work your way just a little bit, just um, um like one to three hours um east of you guys, there is going to be basically the eastern fist of Hurricane Hillary, well, it's going to be Tropical Storm Hillary or Tropical Depression Hillary at this point, that moves into this region, and you're going to have a period mixed in with a tornado threat 
uh, 40, 50, 60 mile per hour winds that blows through this area. If you're in um, Las Vegas, this really moves into your area this, this late this afternoon, this evening. I mean, you even see the wind field. It's way over here. Breezy conditions all the way in the southern and eastern areas of Utah, uh, New Mexico, um, even southwest portions of, portions of um, Colorado. Okay. But look at these winds moving into this region overnight. At this point, it's nighttime. This is moving in. And uh, very strong winds begin to take over the Las Vegas area, the southern half of Nevada. Um, I mean, 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts are possible. And this quickly races out. Um, northward and where uh, rightfully so we have high wind warnings all the way up into what Idaho I mean this is what you're waking up to tomorrow morning um, 30 to as much as 60 mile per hour wind gusts in the heart of Nevada working its way through okay and even western Utah very very windy conditions and it's still windy all the way down here in southern Nevada north um, northwest Arizona so you mix that with the fact that if you look at winds about a mile up in the atmosphere, we call this the low-level jet, low-level winds, and that's what this is. This is basically a sector that typically sets up on the eastern to northeastern portion of tropical systems, and then this will take over the low levels of the atmosphere. So we will have winds at about 50 to 60 knots. It's around 65 to 75 miles per hour, about a mile or above our heads. Okay, this will be mixing to the surface bring in those 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts in Southern California. But this low level jet acts as basically a turning in the atmosphere in the low levels, which will provide our tornado threat into this region late this afternoon to this, well, this afternoon to this evening. So this is the center of Hillary. Here's that Eastern to Northeast quadrant, right? This is the danger zone, basically all threats, uh, the flooding threat, the tornado threat, the high wind threat. This is the danger zone into this region right here that we got to, Got to, got to take serious today. And it will happen fast. It's already happening right now, but the worst of the weather is really about one to two, well, not one to two, a few hours ahead of us. By the time some of you folks watch this video two, three, four hours later, it likely has taken over this region right now. We definitely need to say a prayer for Southern California. Th things are going to really go downhill fast later today for sure. So a little closer look at the radar in this region. And this is what I'm talking about. You see how you start to see these oranges and reds right here? These are the cells that we were, and this is around, it's around 1 p.m. this afternoon, California time. Look at these little cells right in here. These are the danger cells that, obviously, the winds are already going to be whipping into this region. They're, they're going to be increasing. Uh, the, the highest winds has not quite moved in yet. But these, these storms are going to have a lot of wind energy with them, and they're going to have a chance to spin a tornado is possible today in this region right into here. So these are the cells you worry about. Then the core moves in and then it moves on out. Okay, so please be aware today. The updraft velocity swap does not look scary at all. But these will be these will be some low-level spin-ups. Typically they don't show up as much in this, but these will be some low-level spin-ups. And, and I definitely think you're gonna you're gonna get some low-level spins out here today. Okay, so please take this serious for you folks out in Southern California. This is a serious deal. You know, just all kinds of threats today. So we're going to go over the rest of the U.S. and then we'll give you an update on the Atlantic. I can tell you we're going to breeze through this very quick. It's not a lot going on. You got some rain falling. Uh, this extended around this ridge into North Dakota this morning. Here are my kids. I do apologize. It's Sunday morning. We're getting ready for church. Um, some of these showers could drift into northern Minnesota a little bit later today. And then we get into uh, tonight, another area of rain could move into sections of North Dakota. At the same time, there ain't nothing going on anywhere else. It's very quiet um, as you're being dominated by this ridge of high pressure. But as pieces of energy fly um, around the upper portion of this ridge, you could be dealing with a rainy night in areas of North Dakota and be waking up to a pretty rainy morning tomorrow morning. The south central U.S., you're dominated by this ridge of high pressure, sinking air, stable air, no rain. If you're lucky here in the Bay of Louisiana, you get a pop-up shower or storm this afternoon. Elsewhere, um, you're not going to get anything. It's going to be hot, stagnant air. Temperatures today in this region, very, very hot. Um, I don't I don't think it'll be as hot as yesterday, but, you know, all bets are off. Another hot day in Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. Uh, Texas will be very hot today. I mean, basically copy and paste from the last couple of days. It is, it is blistering hot out here. Louisiana, it's very hot. Arkansas is very hot. Missouri is very hot. And then you get to the upper portion of these ridge and the side, and it gets a little bit cooler. But I mean, even the 90s and 
Illinois is very hot in southern Iowa, but please take the heat serious. I, chances are you guys are because you've been doing you've been dealing with this all summer. But take this serious. Um, I don't think you ever quite get used to this kind of heat. Your summer has been absolutely brutal in the South Central U.S. Just brutal, and it's it's not it's not going away right now. August hits really hard out here, but I mean, it's been, it, it doesn't matter what month of the year it is in the summer. It's just been hot. North, Northeast, uh, pretty quiet. You guys are being spoiled. You guys have been spoiled all summer. You get being, you keep, keep on being affected by this troughing and you're not being really influenced by the heat really at all. In fact, another trough will kind of swing through. I actually try to deliver some rain showers to you folks in the upper portion of New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire. You could be waking up to some showers. Um, and areas of Maine uh, tomorrow morning. But outside of that, it's very quiet weather in the northeast. The southeast, same deal, pretty quiet. The only thing that we're watching is this tropical wave that will try to get its act together today into tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how much it'll strengthen. And then um, we'll have to watch for some showers and storms that are possible um, into southeast Georgia. We even had a pop-up here in the low country of South Carolina yesterday. But I think this wave, tropical wave, will continue to bring some showers and storms in southwest Florida. Um, and then maybe we'll spark some later this afternoon for pretty much all of western Florida. Um, so, you know, if you live in Gainesville, Tampa Bay, Fort Myers, definitely could be a stormy afternoon, evening for you guys. Some showers are possible in the eastern sections of South Carolina, maybe in southeast North Carolina. Outside of that, pretty quiet weather day. But you see this, you see this wave racing across the Gulf of New Mexico. This, this is... This is what we got to watch. We'll talk about this here in a second. Temperatures today, um, nice in the northeast, a little bit warmer than what you've seen, but 70s and 80s, uh, 90s mostly for the southeast, uh, brutally hot in the south central U.S., rain cooled air in the Dakotas, uh, a little bit cooler today in the Dakotas in general. Minnesota, upper portion of the state, 60s, lower portion, 80s. Um, we move out west, and you're being... You're basically your weather's being influenced by Hillary, so everybody's pretty much below average or around average temperature wise. But most people below average is because you're dealing with rain cooled air. So update on what's going on out here. I think we got another update and we do. So we still got tropical depression six. I think we're gonna get a couple tropical de more de I think we're gonna get tropical depression seven, tropical depression eight here in the next few updates, as uh, we have a lot of systems out there that um have a right on the verge of becoming a tropical depression but right now as of the 8 a.m update literally just dropped we got tropical depression six we got four other areas of interest this one is our wave that is leaving the florida straits right now emerging into the gulf of mexico 50 percent chance to develop within the next seven days i would say really this is within the next two days because this thing is not going to be around for the next seven days then we got this okay this which is invest 90l has a 80% chance to develop within the next seven days. I think this becomes a depression sometime. It, you know, it says sometime within the next couple of days right here in the discussion, if you can read that really quick. And uh, I really think this is going to bring some squally weather to, the, to Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic. And then we just got to watch it. Okay. I think it'll encounter a lot of shear, um, maybe north of it. But I think that there's going to be an avenue, even if it, as it does begin to turn for it, just to head out to sea. But we don't know that for sure. We'll continue to watch it. Pretty, um, we still got Invest 98L that could become a depression probably sometime in the next update or two. But regardless of what 90L, 98L does, it's just not going to bother anybody but the fishes. It's way too north in latitude and it's going to probably head out to sea. But this thing has just been chilling with us for a while now. Then we got this pretty robust tropical wave. We'll have to watch this one. This one uh, just came off the coastline of North Africa, has a 50% chance to develop within the next seven days. We'll certainly have to watch that one. Um, but we're not going to talk about these that much as there's that wave coming off Africa. There's what's likely going to be tropical depression um, seven here in the next update or two. This is a tropical depression technically, even though it looks very sloppy. And this is a very robust tropical wave right here that has entered the... Um, Eastern Caribbean, which as of right now, I mean, the conditions are pretty favorable, but there is shear right on top of this storm with a tut. And then we got this wave right here that's beginning to act together as we speak, as it's entering full-fledged the Gulf of Mexico. So we're going to talk about this one, and we're going to talk about this one really briefly. So let's look at the European. Let's focus on this really quick. As we get into today, um, <clears throat> I really think as you watch this number drop, 
Okay, watch this number drop. As this number drops, the millibars drop. That means it's a, it's a strengthening system. And it looks like, um, you know, it begins to strengthen. It kind of stays stationary, but, and then it starts to, you know, I wouldn't say it strengthens, but it does strengthen compared to what it is right now. But it moves very slowly through early this week. And then it kind of makes landfall, as I would say, this would be a tropical depression on the Dominican Republic. It brings a lot of rain, which remember, a lot of higher elevations on the Dominican Republic rides over the Dominican Republic and uh, starts to affect areas of the Bahamas. And then it just kind of, uh, you know, just chills out here in the Southwest Atlantic as we get into late this week and really never fully develops. It might try to develop as it heads northward, but it doesn't affect anybody. Okay. So it's a weird kind of life. If this is the way it, pl it plays out, weird kind of movement tries to develop here in the eastern and central caribbean makes that landfall sometime midway this week but if we look at this wave right in here a lot of moisture associated with it right this is that wave in the gulf of mexico this one could just kind of continue to ride across the gulf of mexico we're getting into tomorrow evening and then we start to get into tuesday morning this starts to bring a lot of heavy rain for south texas i think south texas get a lot of rain from this about tuesday um and then into tuesday night Okay, this would be a lot of beneficial rain for this area. So the um, reason I think that um, 90L will struggle is because there is still a belt of shear. You see this blue area that is westernly shear. And I think as this tries to get pulled, just, just tries to pull northward, you got this massive touch right into here that's basically extending all the way into areas of the Gulf of Mexico. This will try to plow into the westernly flow side of this and uh, I think it'll just struggle to develop. If we didn't have this, um, I think that this could be a danger system. But El Nino favors a lack of, of, of Bermuda High up here in the North Atlantic. So that means a lot of things like to turn. You can have a lot of systems in an El Nino, but a lot of times um, things like to head out to sea. There's a lot of fish storms in El Nino. So um, we'll continue to watch this, um, but I think that it's going to kind of peter out as it gets... Um, on top of land, obviously, uh, systems do not develop over land and then gets north of the Dominican Republic. I think that the development of this tropical wave in the um, in the Gulf of Mexico will have pretty marginal conditions to develop, but I think it is going to uh, kind of be affected by a little bit of a shear um, from the base of this um, high pressure up here in the lower 48. But I can tell you, uh, the sea surface temperatures are hot. It's blazing hot in the Gulf of Mexico, well into the 80s, even some low 90s in certain areas. So the sea surface temperatures are totally supportive for a rapidly developing tropical system. But there's many other things that have to come together. Just like with a severe weather threat, there's many other things that have to come together too. You can't just, you got to have two that will tango or three that will tango as far as environmental factors to support this. But what I can tell you with this tropical wave is it's looking like it's going to bring some nice rains down to Corpus Christi, down to Brownsville. Basically, if you live in southern areas of Texas, uh, a lot of rain could fall. But unfortunately, there's going to be a tight gradient up here near San Antonio um, where you guys, uh, Houston, I know you guys need to rain. I think you're going to get a little rain from this. I don't think you're going to get a lot, though. But South Texas, between now and, uh, and, and Wednesday morning, a lot of rain can fall, guys. So that's all I got, guys. I got to get out of here. I'll try to answer comments later this afternoon after church. I'm just a little behind. Uh, y'all bear with me, and I'll take care of y'all. God bless y'all. Have a great day.